Does her hair look okay? It's a good question, friends and viewers. Does her hair look okay? Does my hair look okay? Yeah, Never she looks gorgeous, don't she? You might notice the mud on the trousers. Adventure girl. All right, get in. Shall we introduce the video? I think... Me? You should introduce the video, yeah. Hello, friends and viewers. Welcome to A Transical Turtle. We are going to give you our top five of Seville. Nice. I just went into that producer mode. Boom! That was good. Thank that was you. good. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I think... Hang on, you got beard attached. Save me. Save me. Okay, so our top five is coming from the perspective of a van lifer. The other four in our list don't matter so much, but number one is our campsite. So we were positioned just outside the city, located right next to a bus stop and cycle routes that got us straight into the city, which made life very easy for us because we can't park in the center of a city very easily. But what is that you but google maps has tried to get us to <laughs> yeah yeah google, google maps will tell us we can but on this uh well on this situation it was brilliant wasn't it yeah. we took the ring road round straight straight there the guy was amazing the facilities were clean we parked on astro there's a spanish cozy element to it spanish think... cozy AstroTurf is the first and only time we've been parked on AstroTurf, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we were directly opposite. <laughs> we had some massive supermarkets directly opposite, which is very convenient. Yeah. And like a nice bridge over the main road, which was good because you didn't have to cross. There was no faffing about. Straight onto the bridge, over, pick up your chocolate covered peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the campsite we stayed at has the catchiest name, Area Parking Caravan. Can't forget it. Can't forget that. It's, it's, you hit the nail on the head, isn't it? It's an area for parking your caravan. But let's get into Seville itself with number four. Was that number five then? That was number five. Five campsites. Five campsite, four. area parking caravan. Ding. Ding. Number four. Number four. Should have been doing that every time. Yeah. <laughs> Mia, tell me about the atmosphere of Seville. The atmosphere of Seville is actually surprisingly calm. Um, we went off season, so we were there in about, it was February, wasn't it, when we were there? It was. So we went in February, it was off season, it was relatively quiet, therefore I think it's a very tourist heavy town i think it's a real culture hubbub spot um it's lovely walking around the area is very clean um the, the buildings are beautiful the river is stunning um most people are friendly enough you're not going to be saying hello to everyone as you walk along but it's it feels safe um there were lots of little bits and bobs to have a look at restaurants that supplied food for vegans which is rare in Spain so I was really chuffed to see that yeah um, we ate out a lot which was nice because we were there with friends so we couldn't so you know come back to the van and eat in the van so we were kind of forced to be in Seville forced to eat out which if you look at a lot of our other videos we don't really do so it's nice when you kind of forced into that but you kind of rewarded for pushing the boat out and spending a bit of extra money to do that um, yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and add. Go on. Seville, I think, is the fourth biggest city in Spain. Is it? But it doesn't feel that way. The hubbub is of a quiet, cosy nature. You're surrounded in the famous Sevilla, Sevilla? Sevilla, Sevilla. <laughs> the famous trees of Seville, the orange trees, mm. which create this interesting atmosphere because you're going by and there are just oranges everywhere there's members of the council aren't they going around hitting the trees with sticks and then the ground is orange with oranges and they're just running around just super just shouting the and then just like hitting all the trees and it's like wow even 
fruit clear up in this country or well, mm. in this in this city is like a celebration which is quite which is like almost Disney-esque so um, I think <laughs> it was really cool I, I think our, our top four is loosely the atmosphere and the oranges of Seville definitely put it there yeah number three Bob for number three tell me about the architecture of Sevilla So, the joy of going to a city in a van and travelling various cities is you see the architecture of places just completely change and Seville is no different. You have white and yellow buildings all over the place which are clean, stunning looking buildings and Seville has a few moments of architectural brilliance. The Setasta Sevilla is a more modern building which kind of looks like a giant mushroom. You can walk along the top if you so wish and it's really unique. It is unique and I think it's got like a kind of geometric shape to it but then um, the, the overall effect is quite organic and you can pay for sunset walks around the top which we were told by our friend who did have the spare income to pay to do that. It was fantastic. We spent, we spent one of our afternoons enjoying a coffee underneath said building, said piece of architecture. As children and parents and things came by, it was really lovely. That's true. The atmosphere was so, so friendly and you literally just saw kids playing football in the street. It's a lot of the areas um, pedestrianised, so it's kind of feels a lot more safe to allow your children to just play in this, the kind of central plaza around the air, the piece of architecture, which was really nice. All right, moving on to number, are we at two? We are. Number two. Mia. Yes. Can you tell us all about the Plaza de España? Yeah, so the Plaza de España is a huge historical building dedicated to celebrating the culture of Spain. So it's got loads of little um, kind of like mosaics or tile pieces of art that represent each sector of Spain. Is it a county? They're similar to counties, aren't they? Province. Yeah, province. Yeah. So they represent each province of Spain and I feel like they allowed the provinces to design their own piece of art. They are not cohesive in any way no and and <laughs> and part of the joy it's is oh it's better for it yeah 100%. is, is yeah. seeing like oh tarragona they nailed it or yes uh or you know, other places where you're madrid like... whoa this is cool and then oh barcelona oh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it was but yeah like there's some some provinces nailed 3d art others stuck to the 2d style yeah um, yeah i think some... we've got some footage of that that will be playing oh, now I'll so definitely put it in there's so... maps at the bottom as well which is really cool so you had the map mm. showing where it is and the provinces next to it and then you've got like a piece of art representing that place and yeah some are just in like blue and white or something as well so there's some that really stand out because they're just two colors and there's other places that have gone for a whole famous battle scene and there's horses and explosions and yeah it's a real cultural hot pot hot pot hot spot hot pot no a hot pot because you throw it all into the yeah, mix it's both a hot pot and a hot spot yes. really lovely um very popular when we were there lots of people um were visiting yeah loads and of people going around taking photos and videos i'd, I'd recommend if you go to Seville to do the same, it's, it was probably my favourite singular location in the city. Mm, take a picnic, sit there, eat your picnic on the steps, look at all the pieces of art. Oh, good top tip. That'd be good. Take your picnic to Plaza de la España. Eat there with your children, if you have children, or your lover, or your partner, or whoever you are with, or alone, and check it out, and just spend time in the historical space. Yeah. I think that's nice. And watch people and how they interact because people taking photos in front of the provinces is a brilliant thing to watch. If you're mm. a if you're a person watcher like we are, 
we like sitting in cafes and watching people go by. Uh, that's so true. That is... at, risk of, <laughs> at risk of making this bit go on too long. <laughs> One of the best things about there being artwork for every province is that clearly Spanish tourists visit Seville and they will want to get their photo in front of their province and it's beautiful just seeing them like, hey, it's my hometown. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on, granddad. Yeah. Get the kid in and the kid's there not really paying attention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our final, our final top one hour our number one, there we go. Our number one thing to do in Seville, feels like a bit of a cop out now, but it's to just wander the streets. And take it all in. Mia's alluded to it already, but there are tapas bars and cafes and just wondrous places to visit. But there's also a really beautiful river that's hard to miss and it's worth just taking it in. Well, Bob has highlighted the the vegan aspect, the tacapas bars, the, um, the streets. I think also what's nice to mention here is that there are shops and activities for everyone there. Mm. You can for free just sit on the side of the road and watch a flamenco dancer doing dancing. You, oh, true. you can pay to go and have a look at a museum or um, have a tour of some of the famous ships that they've got parked along the river. Um, I guess it's docked, docked along the river. Um, so there's some things that you can do for, on a shoestring budget, but then there's also things that you can pay a lot of money for and go and do, and you'll get like a once in a lifetime experience, which is really cool. Um, I, I will go on and on because I am a geographer about the pedestrianisation of Seville. It is fascinating. There's cobbled streets and people are very free moving through the streets because they have kept traffic out of loads of their city, which is, for me, I, I love that. I love seeing that. And um, yeah, the atmosphere, the streets, the history, the culture. It all comes together into this exciting hot pot. As you said, it is a hot pot of culture. You've got a little bit of everything. If you want a museum, you got it. If you want food, you got it. If you want free stuff, you've got it. Yeah. It's, it's everything. It's relaxed, beautiful. There's some things we've not mentioned. We didn't visit the bullfighting ring, the cathedral or the palace. We saw all of them from the outside and they're all spectacular buildings that probably should have sat in our architecture top moments but we didn't go into any of these places um, but for someone else they, that might be the thing you're there to do a lot to do in seville really worth a visit did it if you have enjoyed this video and found it useful don't forget to like subscribe ding the bell and share us with a friend it helps our channel grow and this is us pretty much genuinely, isn't it? I wanted to highlight the fact that we're not here to make anything up. We have genuinely gone to Seville. We've genuinely done it in a van. We have genuinely driven all the way from the south coast of England to Seville. Um, and our journey is documented completely on YouTube. But this is us genuinely. And I don't think we've made anything up here. So I wanted to, I want to highlight the fact that we're not here to push anything. We're not advertising anything. We're not sponsored by anything or anyone. We're certainly not sponsored by Seville. That'd be great though. Yeah. Seville, if you're yeah. watching. If you work in the Seville Council. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can make this sound even better, you know. We could. Before that price. <laughs> <laughs>